Greetings, um, Alexis, Marshall, daughters. Uh, I'm going to do it, uh, this AMA. I'm going to answer questions. And uh, we'll see how it goes. It might be really boring. It might be enjoyable. It might not be either. But we'll see. <clears throat> Mark Graves would like to know, what is your f top favorite album to listen to? And then specified non-daughters. As though my favorite album to listen to would be a daughter's album. Because it's not a daughter's album. Um, you know, I'm a big uh, Scott Walker fan. So, uh, you know, The Drift and Tilt are great records. I listen to them frequently. Uh, to excess, probably. Uh, but I really, I really love to listen to Climate of Hunter. My Scott Walker is like a bizarre album. And, uh, I, I mean, I, I like it a lot. I think it's really good. And, um, maybe that, that would right now be my favorite record to listen to. My top favorite. That, that changes. But, you know, right now you're asking, it's Climate of Hunter, Scott Walker. <clears throat> Caden LaPlante asks, when looking back at your entire career of writing music and poetry over the years, what do you feel you've improved on the most? Um, I don't know if I've improved in, a, in, a, in an area uh, uh, as far as ability or uh, technical ability or anything like that. But I think the improvement has been more so of, of just kind of figuring out who I am as an artist, as a writer. Um, you know, when I was younger, you know, I just I kind of wrote to sound like people I liked. And um, my performances were sort of similar. You know, there was a thing in the 90s where hardcore bands, a lot of guys like take their shoes off. Like singers, their bands will play without their shoes and shit. And in like the, in like 97, I emulated that. I was like, hey, you're supposed to take your fucking shoes off, right? That's what you know. And, um, you know, I had to, had to kind of figure out how I perform. And similarly with writing. And, and, I, and, and that wasn't, that's not a development from a long time ago. Some of it is, but like more recently, I think when, when like my first poetry collection I, I put out right, that was released of mine, when I when I look back at it, it doesn't sound like me at all. It just seems like uh, I was writing how I thought poetry was supposed to be. You know, as, as only a reader and, and like a writer. I hadn't like really figured it out yet for myself. And this is only like four years ago or something. So only in the past couple of years have I really, um, in, in that realm of poetry, like kind of figured that out. And, and oddly, lyrically, I'd figured it out, you know, many years ago. But... Um, I'd say that's where I've improved is like self-discovery and, and not so much as a player or a singer or anything like that, but more so as a being thoughtful and honest with myself. All right, let's see. What else we have here? I hope that was good for you, Caden. Christina Kelly asks how I'm doing. How thoughtful? I'm doing all right. Thank you for asking. I hope you're well. Um... I was curious about what piece of art you've created or contributed to you would consider the most fulfilling, whether it be an album, song, poem, etc. Whether it be something that you think working on helped your emotional spirit, pushed you the most artistically, you think is your best piece of work from an audience standpoint, or you just enjoyed yourself the most while making it, whatever you got the most fulfillment out of. Christina, I don't even remember the beginning of this question but luckily i have it here on the screen um what piece of art i've created or contributed to would consider the most fulfilling i don't know if there's any one particular thing that is like the most fulfilling piece of art i've made or, or thing a project i've been in, involved in um 
I've been involved in projects. You know, I worked with with Paul Barker uh, on a song. I sang on a Paul Barker song, and Paul Barker, uh, you know, started ministry with 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 Al Jorgensen. I don't know if he's on that first record, but anyway, Paul was on the best of the of the ministry albums. You know, um, and. I watched, you know, I saw Ministry on Headbangers Ball when I was a kid, I was in like 93, you know, watching fucking Headbangers Ball on MTV at midnight on Saturday. And if you had told me that I would work with Paul sometime down the line, that would have just blown my, my mind. And then I began having conversations on the phone with Paul and we've become friends. And, and, uh, it seems that, I mean, I'm not, uh, it, it doesn't fuck me up the way I think it, I expected it to. It's just sort of like, I'm a person who's creating something and Paul's a creative person and, and, and we've met each other through time and over time. And, and, and um, you know, it, it, it seems strangely normal. And what's fulfilling, the most fulfilling thing, probably not something I've worked on, but but just that I find myself in a position where I'm, meeting people and, and, and my peer group is, is, would have been like a, a people I admire when I was young and growing up. And now these are just like comrades. And I, and that's like pretty fulfilling. It, 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 it's the kind of strange validation to feel like, uh, you know, I'm not, I haven't been wasting my time. I don't know if I answered your question. I'm sorry. Victoria Antoinette. Hello, Alexis. Hope all is well. So you people are very considerate. Thank you. You're, I appreciate that. I was just wondering, with all this time to look inward during COVID, has this time, has this free time provided any new clarity for things you'd like to focus or work on in the future? If so, what? Um, you know, I've just, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm starting this uh, poetry uh, press, literary press, putting on my work, putting up the work of other writers that I, I admire, people I like, and um, who I think are probably not really being listened to. I have a lot of friends who write, and then when I ask what they're doing, they're writing, they say, I don't know, like, I don't know what I'm doing, and I'm not doing anything with it, and I think that's a goddamn shame. So I have um, the, begun the steps to um, remedy that. A lot of interesting writers who can get their shit out there, and then I'm happy to be involved. Because um, I can't play music like this the way I do forever. Uh, my back and neck really hurt. Um, oh, but to look inward? Shit. I don't know. That's like, you know, I had a strange year last year. And, uh, and um, I don't think COVID helped or provided me the time, but, um, it, it coincided with, with this lockdown, this sort of self-discovery and, and finding a program and going to uh, rehab and all that kind of shit is, is, um, um, you know, it's, been, it's that's great. It's a great thing. You know, life is strange. We, uh, we, uh, we only got, we only get to do it. You get one time. So, you know, do your best. <laughs> Kevin. Oh, this is the Kevin I've heard so much about. Kevin. Hi, Alexis. What have you been reading, listening to lately? How is your creative process for your solo work compared to the work with daughters? Reading lately? I just, um, I just did a podcast uh, not too long ago uh, called Books of Some Substance, where... I discussed, I, I just finished up uh, uh, Jean Cocteau's uh, The Holy Terrors. Uh, and we discussed that and it felt like like being in school. I have been in school in like 25 years. Um, so I took notes and, and it was it was actually a lot of fun. I think I'll probably be in the habit of writing uh, or taking notes more often when I'm reading. Um, I read, uh, I read The Elephant Man. I hadn't read this, the play, like this formal stage play ever. Um, and uh, I just started uh, William Carlos Williams' uh, The Doctor Stories. Um, 
and uh you know listening to i don't know you know still a lot of scott walker i've been listening to a lot of nina simone lately and uh simon and garfunkel um I've, I've enjoyed like the comfort comfort listening during uh these like crazy times because it's hard to not like hard to find new music but it's hard to get into anything new because i'm, I'm trying to like feel comfortable and safe in my life and the outside world is, is not a place for safety and comfort even during even outside of the fucking pandemic so uh and the uh, creative process with solo work compared to the work with Daughters. Daughters is very much um, a job where it, it where like it feels like everything's very planned, and you have to you know everyone's working together on the thing or you know like yeah, there's this thing and people don't like what's going on and I, you know it's, it's it can be a little uh, overwhelming. So the solo record is was much more of a of a, um, a, a like free range for everybody involved and myself uh, had my friend Evan Patterson uh, who has a project called J Jail uh, uh, the dear Kristen Hader who has Lingua Gnota, um and uh, the Swedish werewolf Jonathan Severson performed and uh, we all sort of worked together kind of freely and if somebody had an idea we just kind of chased it and 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 if it didn't work it didn't work and and it was a lot of fun and kind of an environment that didn't feel very stressful or uh we didn't feel it was a meaning a deadline though there were deadlines and, and but there was just no um it felt like uh it felt like after school where daughters feel like at school you're here like you got a certain time and then this goes here and here and here and then in like can't run in the halls and shit and then this and i think the solo work kind of felt like like fuck it like i threw all the demos away when we got to the studio i decided we're just gonna like let's all just like start from just where like wherever it's gonna take us so it was a lot of fun um and that's how it that's how it differs also i have complete control over it which is a little strange so um it's less of a democracy uh, when I'm working on my own. Cats, I don't know your, K-A-C-P-E-R. I'm going to call you Casper. That, but that's probably not your name, but I don't know what else to call you. Uh, hello, Alexis. Do you know when we will have the opportunity to hear your solo album? Uh, so April, we'll have a single available in April and, uh, the first single off the LP and then the record will be out in, in um, June, and you can hear it then. Just you know, pay for it. Cause I'm fucking broke. Uh, you must have been a very awesome feeling when you sold out of represses of self-titled and hell songs in pre-order. Um, I don't know. I didn't know that till now. Thank you. Are you planning to make more copies of? past albums yeah we just reissued uh canada songs and then um hell songs and uh self-titled and we'll get represses and you know ho hopefully we'll find ourselves in a place where everything's just available because if you're paying hundreds of dollars for a it's like a fucking record like that's stupid. don't do that don't do that at all that's bad that's a bad thing um so um just wait we're gonna put everything out everything will be available to you uh, and this motherfucker keeps going here. What else we got? Uh, what was the craziest thing you did on stage? And what was your most serious injury on stage? The craziest thing I did on stage? I don't really know. I'll tell you something that, that is eventful, uh, from what I'm told. Where I had taken a, quite, uh, some, some drugs. I don't know what I took. And then I drank... A, copious amounts of alcohol and I apparently I got naked and appeared out of a broom closet with a bucket on my head and a broom and marched across the stage uh it was it was a hideous sight I think I pushed someone's pulled someone's face into my naked ass hole uh and, and uh it it, it uh, and I woke up in a bathroom afterwards so um so that that was 
an evening. Uh, and my most serious injury, I had a, I dislocated my shoulder uh, on a those the reunion shows we did uh, several years ago. We did two shows. So the first night went off <laughs> just fine, and then the second night I was dry humping the stage, and a tribute to the great Prince. And when I pushed myself up onto my feet, I popped my shoulder dislocated. It was my fourth, the fourth dislocation. So I had surgery um, a couple months later, um, but it was a chronic injury like that it was happening. It, it was, it was not, uh, it should not have been a shock to me. It was more of a disappointment than a shock, I suppose. Do you have memories of playing in Poland at Off Festival in 2019? I think I do. Um, and it was great. I th and um, I had a good time. It was a lot of fun. I think we went to see. Uh, I think we went to um, in the afternoon before the before the show. We went to see um, Auschwitz, and that was pretty fucking pretty wild. And uh, fucked me up. And I wept. And uh, it was just heartbreaking and, and upsetting um but i'm i'm glad i, I saw that and uh, but off festival was great <clears throat> best regards and hope to see you soon on stage thank you Cass per that's got to be the most questions just jammed in there blake prince i recognize your name What's the significance behind naming the first full length after the wonderful country of Canada? Was the album or songs in the album inspired by experiences you had in the country? Does Canada hold a different meaning? Was it a random selection? Uh, our, uh, so Jeremy, who directed the Less Sex video for us, uh, was one of the uh, founding members of, of Daughters, and he's Canadian. He's from the uh, Toronto area. And I think maybe I thought I was being clever or something, and we just called it Canada songs. And then we were going to carry the, the songs theme on every record, and, and then we didn't. We did two like that, and then we stopped. But that, that was it. It wasn't like really well thought out. I had written, there's a draft. It's gone now. I've lost it. But there was a draft for a song that was going to be on Hell Songs that was called A Canada Song that was... A direct nod to obviously the title, and then it was written about uh, a night that we had in Canada that I won't, I'm not gonna <laughs> discuss, but um, it was written about a particular event Jeremy got himself into, uh, Jeremy and I. Uh, it was really interesting and fun night. Who is Paul? I'm not, I don't know, I'm not gonna tell you who Paul is. I'm not even sure I decided who Paul is. Paul is where he's going, the Paul adventure will continue. Bill Miller, what's your favorite slash crazy, craziest moment you've had while playing live? My favorite moment, we played in Moscow and um, we had never been to Moscow. We played St. Petersburg the night before and then, then took the train to Moscow to play the next night. And um, the kind of bridge to the ending of, of, um, of Satan and the Wait, there was just like, normally people are kind of clapping, you know? as it goes waiting for the thing and and the, this entire fucking room was like stomping and clapping and it was like really incredible and uh i kind of kind of like took me out of character or something or, and, and like brought me into this like really euphoric moment and um i had to i was kind of smiling looking at everybody else and i, I remember looking back at john and just thinking this is like fucking amazing we're in moscow and we have no reason. We shouldn't be here. We're a bunch of like, like, grew up in poverty, like shitheads, you know, drug addicts and alcoholics and like fucking ruin our lives. And now here we are in like Russia and Moscow playing and like people are having a wonderful time. It was, it was like, yeah, we were fucking, we're, we've like come a long way. And um, from where we were and, and where we were. So that, that's, that's, that's probably my favorite moment while playing um uh let's see benny bobo if you could be any character from all literature who would you choose and why no superheroes 
I don't know. You know the thing with me? I read a lot of uh, books of of, of um, people kind of in 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 um, situations that aren't, aren't aren't admirable or enviable, admirable. <laughs> you know, you know. Um, as far as like the, like fiction and the characters there, I've I've read. Um, you know, I, I I really I honestly can't think of a single person I've identified with in a book and thought like. Yeah, this is the person to be, you know, if I'm like, you know, reading Selby or something, there certainly isn't a character in a fucking Selby and all for anything like, yeah, this is a fucking, I would love to be this motherfucker. Or, um, you know, and even in some of like the, the religious works I've, I've read where, um, there's, there's, you know, even, I mean, there's no one admirable in all of religion. Uh, cause it, I mean, all of the fiction of literature, which is all fiction. It's all bunch of blah fooey. <laughs> so I'm sorry I don't have a have an answer to your question, especially because there's no superheroes. I grew up reading comic books, working in a comic shop, and I think they're admirable here. Oh, fuck it, no. Good question though, but I don't have an answer for you. Um, don't cancel your Patreon. All right, sorry I didn't answer your question, Benny. Minko Holik, I hope I'm saying that right. Hi, Alexis. I want to ask about the process of writing lyrics. Is it getting more difficult or easier after more and more experience with writing? Do you have any special rituals before you start writing? Uh, these, this is all around rituals. I didn't do that myself. Um, is it easier? I don't know. It, it, it's like it's fluid. It's 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 always a little different. Um, you know, I'm not always sure where it's going and it, and, the, and sometimes the songs, I think take more various forms. There's more, I do more drafts now than I used to. Um, but, um, I don't know if it's necessarily, um, the writing process is changing or changed at all. It, not as far as, you know, lyrically, I think, um. I just kind of will sit down and listen to the demos or something, or, or I'll write a lyric down and, and I'll find a place for it eventually or something like that. So I, that, that's kind of always how it's worked then for me. And, 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 you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Um, do I have any special rituals? No. I think the only thing, I, I, I tend to walk around. I walk um, a pace. Um, I, I think it's because it's a little more performative for me. I, I think I like to think about words in a in a rhythmic sense because i don't i'm not a big fan of of melody i don't care much for melody i'm much more of a like uh, drums I'm interested in some of the primal aspects of music writing so um so for me it's more rhythmic and like physical than it is um trying to fucking like hit that high note or catch a get a little fucking catchy uh chorus or some shit like i just i, don't, I couldn't i couldn't be bothered with that type of fucking nonsense um you know i feel like john would have had something really funny for that i think john's ama is gonna be really good he would have had like something really clever john's really funny jennifer arl a-r-l-e man i can't say anybody's name wanted to say moving windows was the first poetry book i've ever bought i want to stop there and say that what the fuck is your problem should be reading more poetry, Jennifer. It's getting me into the medium in general. Finally, hey, I should have finished the sentence reading that before I jumped all over you, Jennifer, and I'm sorry for that. Um, uh, okay, that's it wasn't a question, so I don't even I shouldn't even address it. Now I look like just a prick. Would you guys make any clothing oriented at women? I really want a tank top. With the you won't get what you want skull face. Uh, we do have women's shirts, don't we? There's a note in here, probably from my management, that says, well, we have a few women's shirts available in our web stores already. This issue with women's barrel is it, it almost always runs as a month. Uh. <laughs> we do. Um, I remember years ago, like a really long time ago, we... Um, we used to make like a 
youth sizes. You, there was a big thing where, where like, if you listened to our band, you weighed, you were like a, you were a, a boy who weighed like 80 pounds and you wanted to wear a youth medium. And it was fucking crazy. We made lots of youth sizes, youth larges. We were selling to, you know, 22 year old kids who were wearing shirts far too small for them. Um, and that trend is over as far as I know, but I don't leave the house too often. So I couldn't, I really couldn't tell you, but, um, but we have women's stuff. I don't know. Maybe we should, maybe, what would you suggest, Jennifer? Um, I don't know. I don't know women's specific. I have no idea what, what that would mean. Like thongs or some fucking shit. I don't know. I don't think that's, that's not something we're going to make. Jonah Harper. Hey, Lex. Oh, I guess we know each other. I, we're that kind of close, Jonah, that you, you can call me Lex. Uh, what are some of your favorite films? Have any films inspired your lyrics and poetry? I know Ravidus inspired the first supper, but I was curious of any other examples. I'm also curious if you've seen the A24 movie Under the Skin. I think you might like it. Well, Jonah. Um, some of my favorite films. Uh, I think Taxi Driver is like the greatest film ever made. Which probably sounds typical. But uh, I think it's fucking brilliant. And it's... Uh, to go with my literary like literature like I, anyone admirable that I, that I, that I listen to uh, that I read about uh, no so there's there's no one admirable as far as uh, as um, my film watching but uh, but I, yeah the Taxi Driver is the greatest film ever made um, Night of the Hunter it's brilliant um I mean, you put me on the spot. It's kind of hard to think of think of things. Um, yeah, no, there's a great. I mean, there's a lot of great stuff. You don't need me to tell you what what's great. You don't even want to know what I think. You just fucking um, films inspired. You know, Raven. Yeah, Ravenous inspired. The first supper was was written around uh, that character. That uh, Guy Pierce's character, um, John uh, John Boyd. Was that what the hell his name? Yeah. Um, and you know, things, there's uh, some Star Wars references in the fuck Whisperer. Um, I'm trying to think of other, of other songs, but, uh, I can't think of anything, anything else. I maybe should have done a little self uh, research, research myself and my work before I answer these questions. But, um, that would show a, um, forward thinking thoughtfulness that I often lack uh, when it comes to doing things in, in socially. Um, so my apologies. Uh, but my poetry, no, no. Um, that's far more poetry. I, for me, it's much more selfish, kind of just about me uh, and, and my views and feelings and interpretations of, of what's happening. Um, let's, you know, there, there was a scene um, in the book Survivor by Chuck Palahniuk when I was a big fan of when it came out um, <clears throat> many years ago that, uh, I, that inspired a line in um, Fiery um, uh, off of uh, House Songs. Um, but, uh, you know, there's probably all kinds of little things like that. And I haven't even thought about it. And now that I've read the question, I'm answering it. I kind of wish I did go back and read everything. And, because I probably have more. Good, I have a bunch of good shit for you. Um, I, I want to answer this question, man. I, fucking, I just don't. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Jonah. That said, uh, have I seen Under the Skin? I haven't. Um, it does look interesting, but uh, I haven't I haven't sat down and watched it. I have a, a like a long list. I have the Criterion Channel. It's filled with like all these films that are like three or four hours long, and I just fucking when am I gonna watch this shit? I don't know, but I'm, I'm trying to get there. I'm getting there. Uh, 
Joshua Connor, any plans to reprint your book or have it available for digital purchase? Also, a post would you recommend to fans of your lyrics? Uh, I'll assume that uh, the reprint for um, See Above the Pains of Our Youth, I, I'm not going to reprint that. Uh, as I mentioned earlier in this, I'm not a big fan of, of what I wrote in that book, and I'm, I'm proud of it and proud of it, the, the work I put in, but the the, 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 I'm proud of the work I put in, but the work that kind of came out of it, I'm not, I'm not, uh, happy, happy with, with, with it. Um, I'm sure at some point I'll, I'll release some kind of, you know, selected works and some of that shit will appear there, but, it, but I don't, I don't really want to deal with that book or think about it again. It's, it's sort of, it's, it's it, I did it and, and I'm, you know, onward and upward, I suppose. Uh, also a poet's would I recommend to fans of the lyrics. I don't know if I have, yeah, I'm right more, uh, lyrically, uh, it's more, um, stories, um, it has more of a literary aspect to it, um, like sort of, um, you know, Selby or, um, Flannery O'Connor or, uh, you know, you know, people like that, uh, McCarthy. So, um, I don't really think of a lot of poets, and I think poets who have a literary style, maybe somebody like Gary Snyder, uh, who I'm not a huge fan, where it's kind of storytelling in the poem, and for me, you know, I'm, I like, a, I'm really big on wordplay lately, um, so people like, um, um, Creeley, like, um, um, you know, Robert Creeley, um, uh, you know, a Bly, I love you know, his work, um, so, yeah, uh, you know, uh, Sharon Olds, you should re be reading Sharon Olds, if you're not reading Sharon Olds, then you're, you're really, like, kind of getting your own way, as far as poetry, um, you know, and then, like, a, a, a Charles Simic is a favorite of mine, uh, I love, I love him and his work, and you can talk about, like, a fork, it's a poem about a fork that is, like, just fucking brilliant, like, who can write about a utensil? other than Charles Simic. Um, yeah, so, you know, that I recommend them. Um, <clears throat> uh, David Winter, when is your solo album coming out? I answered this earlier, uh, June 2021. When can we expect a new Daughters album? I, I have the same question. I do not know. Hopefully 2022. It's, if it's another 10 years, it's just like, fuck. And how's the process of recording going at the moment? Eh, you know, we've demoed. Um, we went to, back to machines and demoed for a few days. And, um, you know, I, I, we probably thought... I, I, there's, like, sort of a misconception. I think that everyone has some free time now and then COVID. But, like, it's sort of... It's kind of really fucking us up. And, um, you know... It, everyone's in a strange headspace and trying to figure out how to what is this world will it ever be normal again and um you know that's a that type of thing sort of a lot of like uh big fears type of shit so i think things will settle and everyone will kind of settle in, into life and 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 um we'll be able to think about work and not think about like what the what the fuck is this world we're living in now um we'll see how it goes Chris Pantosi, because N Daughters never got a chance to tour the self-titled album. Do you think bringing material from that album to recent live shows for the first time has changed your relationship with those songs? Similarly, do you think the extensive touring Daughters did for you and get what you want informed how you wanted to approach vocals with a new album? Um, you know, we did shows pre you won't get what you want we did we did a bunch of those and that was really like kind of featuring the self-titled record but you know to sit on a, to, to to like play songs that that are over a decade old you know it can be it, it gets it's really it's really dull and, and and stale and and not um ideal for 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 people who are, are always like trying to do the next thing which is sort of the curse of, of like being a um, of people who works working as like an artist or like some sort of creative realm, where, like you do something and then you sit on it for like 
eight months, 10 months, a year, and then it comes out and then, then people, it's new to everybody else. But, you know, as a person who's created, you're kind of like ready to do the next thing and then to move on and that. And that so that's, um, that can be hard when shit is like, you, you know, you may want to hear fucking whatever song and then like, we've had enough. We wrote it, we recorded it, we performed it. And that shit was a decade ago, and now we, we have to like to try to redo it, to do it again. It's just like, yeah, I've had enough. Um, I think you won't uh, get what you want, you know, different in a way, uh, because it's, you know, it's, I mean, it's still really new. And, um, you know, I, and, and I think we wrote our best stuff that we've ever written is on that record. So that, that should be around for a while. But who knows? I mean, we'll do a few more records, and then maybe you won't get your ones, some shit we won't want to revisit anymore. I think Van Morrison is, is, was often criticized for not wanting to play like Brown Eyed Girl and shit like that. It's like, you know, he never wanted to be, he didn't want to be a jukebox. Um, and, you know, I wouldn't want to be a jukebox either. Fucking just playing this shit to make everybody else happy. But I understand if you go see Van Morrison, you're bummed when he doesn't play Brown Eyed Girl because that's what people want to hear. But I mean, when you're a writer, it's like, you're not just playing it in like Boston. You're playing in fucking Boston, you're playing in Philadelphia, and you play in New York City, and you play in like fucking Tallahassee, and you fucking play it in Sioux Falls, and you play in fucking Portland. And you play that shit over and over and over, and it's exhausting. Um, so, you know, for, you want to keep things fresh. Or we'll go fucking crazy. <clears throat> I'm, I'm slightly worried I'm going to be skipping over some of these questions, but I don't think I've skipped over anything. Chris Kenemir. Uh, you've mentioned in an older interview that you wished the recording process was more live in nature. Any plans for the new album to capture that sort of feeling? I don't know. It's still really early, and um, but you know, I, I, but I don't foresee it. It's not anything we've ever done, and um, I don't think it's something we'll do. There was an attempt to do that when we were when we were trying to do an EP before we did. You want get what you want, and uh, a bunch of the stuff ended up on the album. But we scrapped the EP idea and sort of that like kind of writing on the fly. It just it didn't work. It just doesn't work for 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 daughters. It's it's just not uh, it's not happening. And then that, I mean that doesn't mean it doesn't work because I mean I I made a I made a record myself with people without I just sort of fly on the fly. But uh, daughters is not not that project I can do it. You've also asked, <clears throat> also with the recent repress of Canada songs, is there any chance we could see some of the older songs revisited, reworked to work in a live setting? No. No. I will never sing like pants meet shit ever again. I was stoked to do that when I was fucking like 22. But, uh, pants meet shit. No, I'm good. I think, I think I'm good. Um... Lombardozzi would like to know will you go to the prom with me yeah sure um I got I'll get I'm gonna get my vaccine soon so we'll hit the town um it looks like that's everything I don't believe I missed any questions I'm sure I said a lot of unnecessary things and it took longer than this needed to take uh, it says 39 minutes coming up. And that's, I don't talk, to, I don't want to talk to anybody for longer than half an hour. So thanks for, uh, for, for listening. If you made it this far. Um, I, I, I actually enjoyed this. Just broke up the day. Um, I went to the grocery store. You know, my lunch fell asleep for like five minutes on the couch and uh and then i did this so here's the highlight uh thank you and uh, see you all when we can see you love you